Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Allison, Jeep's father, bringing you the weekly news from Grove Falls. This week, our show should have a, a special interest for all you fathers with teenage daughters, especially if you also happen to have a young man around the house who takes his brotherly responsibilities very seriously. I refer, of course, to the prop and mainstay of my declining years, my son, Jeep. Yes, it's My Son Jeep, the bright and warm-hearted adventures of the Allison family of Grove Falls, transcribed by the National Broadcasting Company, starring Donald Cook as Doc, and introducing young Martin Houston as wonderful, unpredictable, 10-year-old Jeep Allison. It's strange, but all the crises in our household have one thing in common. I'm always the last one to know what's going on. Well, naturally, when somebody finally gets around to telling me, I might act a little surprised. Well, who wouldn't? This particular surprise started one day when Jeep and Peggy were walking home from school together. Hey, Peggy, you know that Emily Monroe that sits in front of me in class? You know, she's the one who always laughs at me when I can't answer a question. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I sure got back at her today, the dumb bunny. You did? Yeah. Miss Kohlhauser asked her what year Pompey was buried. She did? So Emily said she didn't know he was dead. Boy, I sure did laugh. Did you? Trouble is, Miss Kohlhauser called on me next. I didn't know when he died either. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Hey, you're not even listening to me. What's the matter with you? Nothing. There is so. And you got that dopey look on your face. <laughs> now, that's all you know about it, Jeep Allison. I suppose you tell me Elizabeth Taylor looks dopey. Well, what's she got to do with you? <laughs> well, it just so happens that this is the look she uses when she meets her man. Well, you've never even been out on a date. What would you know about men? This is not a topic I care to discuss with children. <laughs> you mean you do have a date? <laughs> never mind. Oh, come on, Peggy. Tell me. Why should I? Well, I'm your brother, and I got a right to know. Well, I suppose there's no harm in telling you. After all, one of these days, he might even be your brother-in-law. Gosh. One never knows. It happened to Elizabeth Taylor in her last picture. <laughs> but Peggy! What? I'm too young to be a brother-in-law. <laughs> Oh, gee, he's so divine. Huh? All the girls are crazy about him. Who? Roscoe and Twyler. Oh, what a beautiful name. He's the handsomest boy in class. And he's brand new. He's just the absolute catch of the season. <laughs> Say, Barbara, I was looking at the desk calendar. You know something? Don't tell me I got your appointments mixed up. Oh, of course not. Well, then what happened? Oh, nothing happened. Spring's just around the corner. Oh, is that all? Oh, it's a wonderful feeling. In the spring, a young man's fancy. Why, Dr. Allison. Yeah, you didn't know I was poetic, huh? A uh, loaf of bread, a jug of wine, and now beside me singing in the wilderness. My, my. Yeah, it's in the air. I had no idea weather affected you this way. A woman in our hours of ease, uncertain, coy, and hard to please. Bob, what if a patient should walk in? Might learn a few lines of poetry. <laughs> yes, and by tomorrow morning, it'll be all over town that Dr. Allison quotes poetry to his receptionist. Uh, to his young and pretty receptionist. Anyway, it might bring in more business. You know, a sonnet with every pill, a poem with every diagnosis. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say spring was just around the corner? It's here. Uh, listen, I feel good and I don't care who knows it. Uh, let's go to a movie tonight. I feel romantic. All right, I'd love to. What's playing? The Grandson of Dracula and Bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> Well, I'll say one thing for you. You know the way to a girl's heart. Scare her to death. Well, hi, Jeep. Love goes toward love as schoolboys toward their books, but love from love toward school with heavy looks. You feeling all right, Pop? <laughs> hey, what's the matter with this family? I, I get a little exuberant, so right away I'm sick. 
Aren't you a little late getting home from school, Jeep? Well, I walked home with Peggy. And you know what a slowpoke she is. And today she was even worse. Moaning along, not even watching where she was going. She probably had something on her mind, dear. She sure did. Roscoe Antweiler. I beg your pardon? I said Roscoe Antweiler. I know what you said, but what is it? <laughs> it's a boy. This has all the earmarks of one of those Allison conversations where nobody understands what anybody else is saying. Yeah, you're right. Uh, who is Roscoe Antweiler? Uh, some drip Peggy's got a date with. <laughs> Do you know him, G? Never even heard of him before. Well, then you shouldn't call him names. After all, he might be a very nice... What did you say? Uh, when? Peggy has a date? Oh, that's right, Bob. Well, what's wrong, Bob? Huh? Oh, well, no, G, uh, G, aren't you hungry? Huh? Don't you feel like eating? I always feel like eating. Well, then go out and tell Mrs. Bixby I said you could have a piece of pie before supper. Golly, you mean it, Bob? Yeah, yeah, yeah. go ahead. You better give me a note, then. A note? <laughs> well, saying I can have a piece of pie before supper. She'd never believe me. Scat. Well, I'm going, I'm going. Oh, Roscoe, you're so divine. Hey, can you imagine? Will you stop pacing up and down, Bob? What's got into you? Oh, you heard, Jeep. Peggy's got a date. Well, what's so terrible about that? My daughter going out with a, uh, an ant whistle. Entweiler. Well, I don't care what his name is. Peggy's too young. Well, she's going on 14, Bob. I don't care if she's going on 40. She's too young. <laughs> These days, they start going out a little younger. Did you? Yes. Didn't you? At 14? Why, I wasn't, wasn't even walking yet. <laughs> oh, now, calm down. There's nothing out of the ordinary in this, you know. Once in every man's life. What? Well, every father has to go through the shock of seeing his daughter off on her first date. Oh, well, I know that, but it's too soon. She's only a freshman in high school. That's just when they start going out. Relax. This boy will probably take her to the movies, load up on popcorn and candy, and then bring her back home. Oh, my goodness. What is it now? Now, I was just wondering, uh, do they still hold hands in the balcony? <laughs> Well, land's sake, child, what's wrong? I haven't got a stitch of clothing to my name. Well, what do you call what you got on? A suit of armor? <laughs> well, of course not. But it's too young for me. All my clothes are too young for me. I'll lend you some of mine. <laughs> Please. I'm serious. I have nothing I could possibly wear tonight. Well, now, what's so special about tonight? It just so happens that I have a date. With Mary Patricia Pearson? Now don't be naive. I have a date with a man. You got a what with a who? Roscoe is calling for me at 7 o'clock. Who is Roscoe? Oh, you wouldn't know him. He's new in town. Oh, he's divine. Uh-huh. So you simply must help me pick out the right dress to wear. Well, what's the rush, honey? You've still got three hours. Oh, but I've got so much to do. My hair, my nails, a mud pack. Uh, a mud pack? What's that for? To rejuvenate my skin, of course. <laughs> well, you ask a foolish question, you get a foolish answer. So, will you come upstairs to help me as soon as you can, Mrs. Bixby? Oh, of course I will, child. But now, who's this, Roscoe? I don't like the idea of your going out with somebody we don't know. Oh, please, don't be Victorian. Yeah, you told your father yet? Oh, I'm going to now. Oh, Mrs. Bixby, wait till he hears I've, I've snagged the catch of the season. Can't you just see his face? I sure can. <laughs> oh, he'll be crazy about Roscoe. He's such an angel. An angel, huh? Well, when he flies in the door tonight, I'm going to have a little talk with him. <laughs> Father, will you stop pacing up and down? I like pacing up and down. <laughs> You're going to wear a hole in that rug. Uh, this is no laughing matter. You, you don't understand. You've never been a father. You're acting like you've never been a father either. Well, I don't see what all this fuss is about. Roscoe's parents are giving him a party, and he's just the most eligible bachelor in school. A bachelor at 14. <laughs> Please, Father. 14 and a half. 
Peggy's right, Bob. You're making too much of this. It's a perfectly harmless date. What did I say it wasn't? It's just too sudden, that's all. I'm not prepared for it. Prepared? You're not going with Roscoe, I am. <laughs> I know that. It might not be a bad idea, though. Uh, Barbara, uh, do they still use chaperones these days? Bob. Oh, Father, you wouldn't. Okay, forget it. Oh, I should hope so. I'm sorry I brought it up. <laughs> Aren't you being a little unreasonable, Bob? Come on, admit it. Oh, well, yeah, I, I suppose you're right. It isn't that I'm against a going out, but couldn't she wait seven or eight years? <laughs> <laughs> Whether you like it or not, Peggy is old enough to go to a party with a young man. Well, maybe she is, but who is this young man? What do we know about him? I told you, Father. His family just moved to town. Uh, there, you see, nobody knows a thing about him. <laughs> oh, Bob, stop exaggerating. He must be a perfectly nice boy or Peggy wouldn't have anything to do with him. Oh, well, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, you're right. Now, I have been unreasonable. Yes, you have. And stubborn. You're right. And even a little pig-headed. Uh-huh. Well, stop agreeing with me. <laughs> Peggy, honey, you go right ahead and have a date and have fun. Enjoy yourself. Uh, I was a little worried, I admit it, but I'm all over it now. Oh, Pop! Oh, you darling! <laughs> oh, I'm going upstairs and start getting ready. That was quite a hug you got. Did you hear that? She called me Pop. She hasn't done that in months. That's your reward for being a nice guy. I'll go up and see if I can't help Peggy. I'm <coughs> glad I had the sense to let Peggy decide this for herself. Not many fathers would do that. Most of them would kick up a big fuss, throw their weight around. I'm, I'm glad I'm different. Makes it easier for Peggy. She'll enjoy herself more, too, knowing I'm not worried. Yeah, but this Roscoe, who is he? He comes from out of town. That could meet anywhere. For all we know, he could be fresh out of prison. <laughs> oh, no, that, that's impossible. He's not old enough. But his father is. <laughs> oh, he could have been in prison. No, no, that's silly. But I know one thing. When that boy shows up tonight, I'm going to have a little talk with him. Hey, Pop, is there somebody in here with you? Hmm? No, why? Well, I heard you talking. Oh, well, I must have been talking to myself. Mm. You know, I do that sometimes, too. You do? Sure, when I got problems. You got a problem, Pop? Uh, I guess you might call it that. Want to tell me about it? I don't think so, son. Why not? You and me should always talk things over. After all, we're the men of the family. Yes, we are that. Well, then. Well, I don't think you're quite old enough to understand this, Jeep. Oh, is it about Peggy State? Well, how'd you know? I just guessed. Oh. Uh, you think she's too young, huh? I don't know, son. At first I think she is, and then I think she isn't. The trouble is, this is Peggy's first date, and I, I don't know how to act. All of a sudden, I've got a pretty daughter instead of just a, a little girl. It's upsetting. Yeah, I guess it would be. Yeah, but the worst thing is, nobody ever heard of this boy she's going out with. Well, you'll meet him when he comes to get Peggy. Well, a lot of good that'll do me. Suppose I decide I don't like him. What am I going to do? I, I can't throw him out of the house. Why not? <laughs> well, it wouldn't be polite. Supper's ready, everybody. Oh, come on, son. Let's go wash up. Gee, poor Pop. He's awful worried. Well, no two ways about it. When that Roscoe gets here, I'll just have to have a little talk with him. <laughs> Aren't you ready yet, Bob? Oh, I'm ready, but where is he? What are you talking about? That Roscoe boy. What are you talking about? Oh, I thought you were taking me to the movies tonight. Oh, well, I've got to wait till this kid shows up. Uh, it'd be just like him to sneak in the back way to avoid me. Bob, you're not making any sense. You built this boy up as a combination blue beard and, and a second story man. Well, it's natural that I'd want to meet my daughter's first date, isn't it? Very natural. Why do you keep looking at your watch? He was supposed to be here at 7 o'clock. But it's only 20 minutes of now. Well, the least he can do is be on time. <laughs> All right, have your talk with him. Then we'll go to the movies. I, uh, I can't go out tonight, Barbara. Why not? With Peggy out on her first date, uh, no, I, I've got to stay home uh, and... Uh, and what? Well, uh, uh, and worry. <laughs> oh, well, he's here. <clears throat> What'll I say to him? Uh, well, the first thing should be good evening. Huh? For heaven's sakes, go answer the door. Yeah. 
Why don't you go? Oh, no, that's not my department. I'll go upstairs and help Peggy. Well, what's his big rush? It's not even quarter to seven. You're early. Yes, sir. Is Miss Peggy Allison at home, sir? Where'd you think she'd be, out in the garage? <laughs> beg pardon, sir? No, 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 I, I beg yours. Come on in. My name's Entweiler, sir. Mine's Allison. Not Dr. Allison. Why not? Oh, you look much too young to be Peggy's father. Oh, you, uh, you think I look more like her brother? Yes, sir. <laughs> her brother's tan. I, uh, I meant her older brother. She hasn't got one. Besides, I assure you, I am her father. I never would have believed it. Well, if it'll make you any happier, I have some cards and letters that'll prove my identity. Oh. No, sir, I'll, I'll take your word for it. Thank you. Uh, uh, yes, sir? I, uh, I suppose you're a Cub Scout. Oh, no, sir, I'm much too old. You are? Oh, well, yes, of course. Uh, do, do you like school? Yes, sir, I'm on the basketball team. Well, that's nice. What do you do for a living? <laughs> sir? Oh, I, I mean, what, what does your father do? He's a lawyer. Oh, he is? Yes, sir. He has his own offices. Oh, really? Well, I didn't know. That, that's a fine, responsible profession. Well, I guess I've learned everything I need to know. Uh, say, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Antoine. Oh, uh, just one thing. I want my daughter home early. Is that understood? Oh, yes, sir. And when I say early, I mean oh. early. Who's that out there in the hall? Oh, <laughs> who are you, young man? I'm Roscoe Entweiler, and I'm waiting for Miss Peggy Allison. Well, now, why are you standing out here? Why aren't you sitting in the living room? Nobody invited me to. Oh, land's sake. You have to forgive the doctor. He's got a lot on his mind. Come on in and sit. Thank you. You must be Mrs. Bixby. Peggy's told me all about you. What? I beg your pardon? What she told you about me? Oh, that you were uh, a very nice lady. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so you're taking our little Peggy out, huh? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> if she ever comes downstairs. <laughs> oh, she'll be along. You know how girls are. No, ma'am, I don't. This is my first date. <laughs> oh, I see. Tell me something, young man. Um, you like Peggy? Sure. I think she's swell. Well, then I'm going to give you some advice. If you want to take her out again, just be sure and bring her home early tonight. Oh, I will. And when I say early, I mean early. <laughs> Never saw so much fuss over just an old day. Oh, is this him? Uh, this is Peggy's brother, Jeffrey. And uh, this is the young man who's calling for Peggy. I'm very pleased to meet you. Hi. Now, Jeep, you entertain Mr. Entwater until Peggy comes down here. I've, uh... Heard a lot about you from Peggy, Jeep. I'll bet. You certainly have a very beautiful sister. Peggy? Beautiful? <laughs> well, if you say so. Well... You want Andy and Russell? Huh? Well, Mrs. Bixby said I should entertain you. Well, th this is a new suit. I wouldn't want to get it wrinkled. Stand up a minute. What? Stand next to me. I want to see how much taller you are. Hmm... Yeah, I guess you're tall enough for. Why are you two gone tonight? To a party at my house. What's it for? My folks are giving it. Why, is it their birthday? No, it's so I can get to know some of the kids in school. Oh. Where do you live? 2117 Crestview Terrace. Gee, that's all the way on the other side of town. Well, what of it? You mean Peggy's got to walk all the way over there? Listen, we're taking a bus. Oh. What does your father do? He's a lawyer. Does he make a lot of money? Do you always ask all these questions when your sister goes out? Well, I don't know. She's never gone out before. Oh? So you better bring her home early. Well, I will. You don't have to worry. I'll bring her home real early. <laughs> Shall I deal another hand? Not for me. I'm cleaned out. Oh, doctor, it's only matches. Matches or money? I never seem to keep either of them very long. Doctor, I've never heard you complain as much as you have today. Really? 
Well, I better watch myself. Maybe it's the change of season. The approach of spring seems to be your excuse for anything. This afternoon you were quoting poetry. Oh, oh come on, Doctor. Quote me some poetry. Oh, well, I'm not a water faucet. I can be turned on and off at will. Oh, come on. I I'll fix waffles for you tomorrow morning. Promise? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, making toast by the fireside, nurse fell into the grate and died. But what makes it ten times worse, all the toast was burnt with nurse. Charming. Cold-blooded, but charming. Uh, it uh, ain't exactly what I was expecting. Uh, you didn't specify what kind of poetry. You still owe me those waffles. Oh, you get them, Doctor. You know, I want mine with strawberry jam. And I like mine better with honey. And uh, how would you like yours, Doctor? Oh, I think he's a very nice youngster. What? Young Entweiler. Nice manners. I'm not the least bit worried. We're back there, are we? No, no, no. I'm not stewing about it anymore. Well, you don't have to, Pop. He's plenty tall enough for uh, At this point, I wouldn't care if he was only two feet high. I just wanted to have a good time. Oh, didn't she look pretty when she went out? She looked so grown up. Mm -hmm. You know something? She's too good for that rock boat. Land's sake, who's that? I just want you all to know that I never want to speak to you again as long as I live. Peggy, Peggy, what are you doing here? Well, is the party over, honey? It's only a quarter to nine. You have completely and absolutely ruined my entire life. I'll never be able to show my face and grow false again. <laughs> well, what, what in the world? All of you, will you please stay put? I'll, I'll go up and see if I can find out what this is all about. If that Entwistle said anything to upset her, I, I'll have it out with his father. And I'll bet you can lick him too, Pop. <laughs> My goodness, Barbara's been up there with Peggy for 20 minutes. What could the boy have said to her? Oh, wait a minute. We're all forgetting something. When that child came running in here, she didn't say anything about Roscoe. She said she never wanted to speak to us again. Hey, that's right. What do you suppose she meant? She must have meant she didn't want to speak to us again. <laughs> but we, we certainly aren't to blame for her coming home early. Well, that's what I don't understand. When she left here, she looked so happy. Hey, maybe his folks said something to her. That's it. It can't be anything else. They must have insulted Peggy. Oh, but how? Here comes Miss Miller. Maybe she knows. You're a nice-looking bunch of conspirators, I must say. What'd she say, Barbara? Well, just what I should have expected. It was your fault, all of you. Well, that's ridiculous. We didn't do a thing. No. Why do you think Roscoe brought her home to quarter to nine? Because he was scared stiff. Oh, scared of what? Of the Allison family. Oh, nonsense. How could we scare anybody? It wasn't easy, but you managed. But how? By ganging up on him. It's bad enough for a youngster on his first date to have one person interview him, but when three people do it, it's... Three? Well, it was just me, and all I said was to get her home early. Mm, well, I talked to the boy, too. You did? What'd you say? Get her home early. <laughs> oh. There, you see? Oh, but that's only two. Oh, wait a minute. Jeep? Yes, Bob? What did you say? Get her home early. <laughs> You all ought to be very proud of yourselves. He certainly got her home early. Oh, poor kid, but I never for a minute thought that, that she... That was the trouble. You didn't think. I had to open my big mouth. Mm. Wasn't just you. I'm to blame, too. No, no, it's my fault. No, it's mine. Well, gosh, don't I get any of the credit? <laughs> if it'll make you feel any happier, you're to blame, too. Now that you've divided the blame into three equal slices like half a pie... How about a thought for Peggy? You're right, Barbara. The first thing I'm going to do is go up and apologize to her. Oh, let me go first, Doctor, please. You know, uh, women can handle these things much better. Gee, Pop, sure going to be quiet around here if Peggy never speaks to any of us again. <laughs> and I prided myself on being the kind of father who let his children think for themselves. Well, live and learn. Mm, that's a nice sentiment, Bob. But more important, what are you going to do? Well, what can I do? The, the evening's already spoiled for her. Think she'll write us notes? What, she? Well, suppose we're at the table and she wants me to pass the potatoes or something. How's she gonna let me know if she doesn't talk? <laughs> you, uh, you think I ought to call Roscoe and apologize? Well, it'd be a nice gesture, but I don't think it would help Peggy. Well, it might make him feel more like taking her out again sometime. Hey, Pop, I got a better idea. What? When you call him back, ask him if he doesn't want to bring Peggy back to the party. Tonight? But it's after nine o'clock. What of it? It'd make Peggy feel good again. And she wouldn't be mad at us anymore. Jeep's got the right idea, Bob. Well, you think Roscoe would come all the way back? Sure, he likes Peggy. 
I better be so glad you called up They don't run all the way over here It's worth a try Okay, I'll do it And don't forget, Pop Whatever you do Don't tell him he has to bring her home early <laughs> Two hundred and eight, two hundred and nine, two hundred and ten, two hundred and eleven. What on earth are you counting? Why should you have all the fun? If you're going to march around the living room all night, I can at least amuse myself by counting the number of steps you take. I'm glad you can take this so lightly. Evidently, you're not aware that it's 27 minutes after 11. Evidently, you're not aware that your watch is slow. It's 28 minutes to 12. Well, that makes it even worse. Oh, why did I listen to Jeep? Because he had a good idea. No, because the two of you badgered me into it. I, I never should have let her go out again. I thought we went through all this. But it's different now. It's late. Did you see me worry the first time she went out? I did. Oh, well, that's different. Anyway, something might have happened to her. She might be in an accident. Oh, that's silly, Bob. The boy's too young to drive a car. Well, who said anything about a car? He could have taken her out on his bicycle. <laughs> Fresh pot of coffee, Doctor. Could you stand another cup? Oh, no, thanks, Mrs. Bixby. I have coffee coming out of my ears now. Golly, isn't Peggy home yet? Gee, what are you doing up? Well, I heard Miss Bixby out in the kitchen. I wanted to see what was going on. Oh, I hate to admit it, but I'm getting a little anxious. It's, it's, it's kind of late. Uh, you see, Barbara, Miss Bixby's worried, too. Now, stop it, both of you. Want me to call him up for you, Pop? Oh, wait a minute. There she is. Thank you, Roscoe. Thank you for the most perfect... And divine evening of my life. See, Pop, what you were worrying? Peggy was having a good time. <laughs> Hello, all you darlings. Father. Oh, how perfectly sweet of you to wait up for me. <laughs> and Miss Miller. And Mrs. Bixby. Oh, and my darling little brother. <laughs> oh, mush. <laughs> <laughs> You really enjoyed yourself, didn't you, honey? Oh, it was an absolutely superb gathering. Just everyone was there. Gee, they must have a big house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear little G. Well, good night, everyone. I'm off to get my beauty sleep. Gosh. You took the word right out of my mouth. <laughs> I'm glad this don't happen every night. I just couldn't stand it. <laughs> Guess we can all go to bed now, huh, Pop? All of a sudden, I've got a grown-up daughter. And all of a sudden, I realize it's close to midnight. I'm tired. Oh, well, of course, you must be. I'll drive you home right away. And after this, Pop, see that Miss Miller gets home early. <laughs> My Son Jeep was created and written by Walter Black and William Mendrick and directed by Dan Sutter. Lynn Allen is heard as Barbara Miller, Joan Laser as Peggy, and Leona Powers as Mrs. Bixby. With Peter Fernandez as Roscoe and featuring young Martin Houston as 10-year-old Jeep. Starring in the role of Doc is one of America's finest actors and most versatile comedians, Donald Cook, currently starring in the Broadway hit The Moon is Blue. And now this is Fred Collins inviting you to be with us again next Sunday, same time, same station, for another transcribed visit with America's favorite family, the Allisons of Grove Falls and My Son Jeep. Who will win the Oscar? Listen this Thursday over NBC.